Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the last episode, I talked about user adoption uh, metrics, right? Where I spoke about um, the best way you can uh, measure the user uh, adoption metrics, right? So uh, continuing uh, on with that same topic, uh, I wanted to talk about how to track a business outcomes. Obviously, you know, it's important that once you, you know, decide to go live with your implementation, your measure of success is obviously, uh, sorry, your user um, adoption uh, measure of success is determined by different factors, right? And even demonstrated how you can, you know, uh, use a different dashboard to track that. Pretty, pretty cool, right? Now, that's all great. But now we need to focus on something called uh, track business outcomes. So I thought I'm going to explain this using Trailhead. It's pretty simple. Now, you as a company, right, obviously you decide to go with the Salesforce because you had a business problem and you implemented the Salesforce pretty successfully, right? Now, what actually determines the business outcomes, right? Now, you must have certain metrics in place. You must want to combine the user uh, adoption with your business outcome. So the few things uh, you can do, right, if you're... Um, you are dealing with the, uh, a problem to track business outcome after a go live. You can check how my team tracking with sales. Obviously, you know, you need to worry about the sales, right? Because if there is no sales pipeline, then your business won't survive, right? Now, when you talk about the team tracking the sales, right? The few things you can measure year to date sales, quarter to date, and opportunity win, right? And another thing you can look at the, the sufficient pipeline and we can look at the new business pipeline and pipeline by owner and watch the quality of my leads and the lead conversion rate and the lead conversion rate by source. Obviously, because see, the thing is there, right? When a, when a customer reach out to you, say, with an inquiry through phone or uh, through uh, email, right? Uh, you just need to make sure that you, you answer that query so that uh, there's a high chance of converting those leads to an opportunity. When that happens, right, you got to sell. So that's the thing you need to, uh, you know, you can use to measure um, your business outcomes, right? Because if you have so many leads sitting and those leads are not getting converted into opportunity, then we have serious issue because then you're not actually generating the sales pipeline. Right, uh, and then the another thing you also you know can use to uh, check how you can uh, engage with your customer, right? So perhaps the customer might have bought a product once, and they are not interested anymore. So the the account is sitting idle. There's no uh, conversation. So you can measure all of this using a dashboard, right? So that's one of the reasons why I spoke about dashboard in, in yesterday's episode. So you can do the similar stuff using this as well. Now, if you want more information, right, if you wanted to uh, measure more stuff or measure your uh, business outcome, you can also uh, have a checklist. So Salesforce provide you with some checklists. So this is something called Get Started with the Workbook. So this is a pretty handy manual in my opinion. So it talks about your goals, your pain points, your usage and data quality, feedback, business performance, and how do you define your sales process? That's about the user experience, right? And display it, empower your user. Because the whole adoption strategy when you talk about, right, it does involve empowering your user. Because your super user needs to be on board, your regular user needs to be on board, the people who are going to use Salesforce needs to be on board, right? Maybe your uh, CEO or even the architects who needs to be on board because uh, they can vision the future pipeline in terms of uh, functionality upgrade or other aspect of it, right? And the super users are very important because they are the one, they're the champions of your product. They are the one who will be using it often. They are the one who will be uh, writing the business process. They are the one who will be training other people, right? So they need to be on board. So a lot of things you need to factor that into consideration when you talk about user adoption. Because the user adoption, though sounds like a very simple term, right? 
but it has a huge connotation if you are not going to pay very attention to it because obviously you decide to go with the product, you implement the product, then the user needs to be on board and your business process needs to be on board as well because obviously um, whichever software you go with, right, it doesn't matter um, you with Microsoft CRM or it doesn't matter you go with the Salesforce. The, the key is you just need to remember that whatever software you use to implement, users should be on board and it reflects your business outcome, right? Obviously, you're there to make money. If it's going to help you accelerate that process, that means you are you have implemented the right thing, right? You're actually taking care of your pain point. If that's not the case, then unfortunately, you'll miss that opportunity to take care of the pain point. So that's one of the reasons why I personally believe the uh, user adoption metrics is very important, right? So this seems like a pretty simple topic, uh, but it's very crucial in my opinion. And what a great way to start this um, um, certification, right? The training process, we looked at the user option process. So what have you learned if I ask you? So if I, if I wanted to have a conversation with you, right? If you're going to learn the certification, let me ask you, what have you learned? If I put you, uh, if, if you are having an interview with me, and let me throw a curveball question at you. So the question will be, so I decided to implement, say, SAP, uh, you know, and we have an old legacy system, and, and the users are not on board uh, with, uh, to, with the SAP implementation. How do you go and convince your user? What's the first strategy you're going to uh, keep into consideration? What's the first step you follow to make sure that users are on board? Are you going to frame a training process? Are you going to show them the software? Or are you going to uh, uh, decide just to ignore them and, and go on with the implementation? Or are you going to worry about the post-implementation stage? How are you going to do that, right? These are the things you should be asking the question, right? Maybe you have a business problem you, you wanted to solve. Maybe you have a project you are uh, busy with at this stage, right? Have you thought about the user adoption in your current implementation, right? If not, is the right thing to do, right? So this certification will give you that edge. So that's the whole point for me to make this certification course, just to help you guys achieve, uh, you know, your goal to get this certified as well as to add a value to the business you're involved. So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.